So, Graham, uh, Neil obviously announced JT's going to start, which not a surprise, but just what you've seen out of him in camp, where he is now compared to where he was, what do you, what'd you like about what he's doing? Yeah, I definitely think he's improved, and, and um, well, I think a lot of it's just he's getting more and more comfortable with what we're doing with our guys. Um, he's been pretty consistent lately, and uh, you know, I think we've talked a lot about just uh, how intelligent he is. Uh, and so that that helps, but you know he's he's done a good job, and like I said, he uh, I think he's gotten better and better as he's gotten more and more comfortable getting just back into the offense and and working with the uh, with our personnel, and so that's been good to see, and uh, hopefully he goes out there and plays at a really high level this week. Do your comfortability with him play a role in that as well, since you guys did uh, work together? Uh, I think that obviously helped him coming in here because. Um, like we've talked about before, he has a he had a background knowledge of what we do. You know what I mean. And so it's not like he was learning a completely new, new offense or new language. Um, it, it was stuff that he stuff that he knew, things he had reps in. It just been a while. You know what I mean. And and uh, but but really, if you look at offensive football, I think like a lot of the concepts. I mean, everyone throws similar concepts. You know, so it's not like uh, he didn't have reps. At, it's not like Georgia runs a, a completely different offense than anything that you know. I mean, different concepts. So so I think it's. You know, he's played some football. He's he's had reps, but just getting back, like I said, back in the reps of the way we do it, um, and, and seeing our signals and knowing our language and, and getting used to the guys that that uh, that uh, we have here, I think was probably the biggest adjustment. But again, coming in with the coming in with reps in it, coming in knowing it a little bit, coming in uh, working together before definitely helped him. But I mean, there's also the in game part too. He knows what you think and how you think and how you react during games. So there's got to be a comfortability yeah. there too when he's on the field yeah we had a half together and and before he went down you know um they have. yeah <laughs> hopefully we can reproduce it but um you know no he uh i definitely think that that um us knowing each other and and you know we did have a spring together there at sc and then a fall camp and 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 a half of a football game and so um like you said i think he knew what he was getting into when he came here and knew what uh, as far as coaching goes, and and the way we react, the way we handle things, the way we do things, and and um, so so I think that probably that played a, a decent role in the recruiting process of getting him here, uh, and then once he got here, I think just like I said, having having reps built into the offense definitely helped the transition with him. How's his timing with the receiver since he didn't have the spring with him? Um, I think it's been pretty good. You know, I think that. I've probably said this out in here before, but one of his biggest strengths, I think, he throws a really catchable uh, deep ball, and, and you know that's a that's a throw that can take reps to get used to with with new receivers. Um, but but he's done a good job of that, you know what I mean? And like I said, I think that that's a knack he has. Um, is you know not I'm not saying that you know I think lots of people can throw deep balls, but his are just very catchable for whatever reason. You know what I mean? Um, he does a good job putting the right amount of air on it and putting it in a position where his guys can catch it. And so, um, like I said, that that's – throwing the ball down the field is something that can take reps with, with, with personnel. And he's done a really good job transitioning into that. You know what I mean? And uh, so, that, so that's been very encouraging to see. And uh, like I said, I think that, that he's transitioned well. He, I know they threw a lot this summer. Um, so, so that was important, I think, as far as timing goes. Uh, but it's always a little bit different when someone's out in front of you. And so this fall, uh, you know, I think in the summer they, they felt really good going into the fall camp. And then at the beginning of fall, now there's someone in front of you, so the timing's just a tad bit different. Uh, so, so I think there was a small bit, a small adjustment period there. Uh, but as fall camp's gone on, I think him and the receivers and really all the quarterbacks have gotten more and more on the same page and continue to improve. And uh, they, they need to go play at a high level this week. How's the timing been the last two weeks since the last scrimmage? Uh, I think it's been good. He's they've um, he's gotten, or especially with JT. I think he's gotten more reps lately, and that obviously helps uh, with timing. The more reps you can get with someone, the uh, the better the timing gets. And and uh, like I said, last couple of weeks it's been pretty good. What have, um, you talked about you know obviously the improvements that you've seen from him throughout this past month. But what about you know from when you saw him at USC as a sophomore to um, now, what, what, what has changed or, and from that JT to this JT? Uh, he's pretty similar, to be honest with you. You know, uh, I think that he was probably coming out of high school. Um, you know, just his personality is is 
um, pretty stoic and uh, but very like very intellectual. You know what I mean? And so I think coming out of high school, he was probably like intellectually and understanding football just because of the person, his personality and the kind of way he handles things. I think he's probably ahead of where most people are. And so coming here, I think that's that he's pretty similar. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times you'll see a huge difference between a young, you know, a kid when he's younger and a kid when he's older. And, and JT's definitely seen a lot and probably grown a lot. Um, he probably understands things a little bit better. But but even as a young guy, you know, that was his second year in college, should have been his first. You know, he skipped his senior year of high school. And that's what, and you know, went to SC for that first year. And then when I got there, it was the second year. Um, he was already, you know, like I said, I think it's just his natural personality to want information. So because of that, um, understood what was going on, was very intelligent, especially like from a football standpoint. And, uh, and his personality is very, like I said, he's pretty stoic. And, and uh, so, you know, he's, he's pretty similar to what he was. Uh, at SC, to be honest with you. And, and I think some of it's just kind of, like I said, his personality and kind of where he was as a young guy. So Georgia and SEC football didn't mess him up? <laughs> <laughs> no. they. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think uh, there at Georgia, you know, I think he, he uh, probably did some good things. You know what I mean? I think seeing things another way and, and uh, getting to experience some other things was good for him. Obviously, he saw some, some very high-end talent. And so – um, had to go against some some great competition and play with some great guys too, you know. And so it, it goes both ways. But uh, I do think that that kind of I think that probably helped him more than anything there at Georgia was just the competition he had to play against, you know, probably more than anything every day in practice. What I mean, they had like seven first rounders on that defense or something crazy last year, you know. What I mean, he got to practice against those guys every day. So going against that kind of talent can't do anything but help you. And so I think that, ball, like that yeah. So I think that side of things probably really helped him. You have to have uh, some insight into Slovis at Pitt. Have they? Are, are you giving input into you know things that you might take advantage of uh, the defense? Yeah, I know Slovis pretty well, but you know I think that uh, you know I can tell you. I mean, there's not much I can tell you. You can't see on tape about that kid. You know what I mean? I think he's a very accurate passer. He does things really well. Um, and uh, you know I've talked to those guys. I've talked to our defense side of the ball about Keaton because um, I do know him really well. But uh, it's a it's a totally different. I mean, I'm assuming I don't know exactly what they're doing because I haven't watched their offense. But it's probably something totally different than what we were doing at SC. And so I think that from that standpoint, you know, you kind of have to figure out what they're going to do and and see how he fits into that. Um, he's a talented passer. He's very gifted. I've told him that. He's you know he's accurate. But uh, you know, from a scheme standpoint. You know, if they're if if they were running our scheme, I could tell them a lot of stuff. You know, but they're not playing our scheme; they're just playing a kid. And uh, so, it, so it'll be interesting to see how they use them. Uh, it'll be different for me, obviously, watching them play. I've pulled for him for a long time, and for the first time, I'm gonna have to pull against him. But uh, you know, it'll be fun to watch, and and I'll be interested to see what he does out there. Uh, but but like I said, I've talked to him about about the guy, um, and and told him anything they've wanted to know. But I think that from you know, most of most of the things I've told him, you can turn on the tape and see and see what I've told him. You know, flip it around to what Bob's saying. Um, he also knows you, so he can impart information to the pit coaches on how you plan, how you prepare, how you signal, all those things. Do you have to mix that up, switch it up a little bit because he does have knowledge of how you go about game planning and preparing and attacking defenses? Oh, for sure, especially from a signal standpoint, stuff like that. We've had to tr pretty much change everything, um, <laughs> just because you know right. there is a possibility that you know I think he can cheat better than I can cheat this week. But um, <laughs> so we we've changed a lot of that stuff, and uh, to to try to protect the signals and stuff. Um, but from a from a scheme standpoint and all that, I think that you know kind of like what I said, there's, there's not a lot you can learn from him that you can't turn on the tape and see. You know, um, so. I think that that's uh, from that standpoint. I don't, I'm not as worried about it uh, from a from a signal and stuff like that standpoint. If they're trying to dig into that, we've tried to tried to change all those up from from what we signaled at SE and what they signaled here, just to try to protect those the best we can. Obviously, quarterback is what everybody's interested in, but just the offense as a whole. Are, are, is this offense ready for what's coming Thursday, or are, are there still unknowns for you as well? We'll find out Thursday, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, you know, I think we're in a good place. I, I like our guys. Um, you know, they're going to challenge us. They, they've 
you know, Coach, Coach Narduzzi is a defensive guy, and he, everywhere he's been, he's been good on defense for a long time. And so, obviously, there's going to be a challenge from that standpoint. But we have to go, uh, you know, do what we believe in and see if we can execute. And I think that's going to be important for us. And, and like I said, I think that our guys have done a good job. Um, we have some players that we feel very confident about. And uh, going to have to go, like I said, go go make plays. And if we do, we'll give ourselves a chance. You know, they're going to play a lot of players. I mean, you're going to play several running backs, a lot of uh, wide receivers, at least seven offensive linemen. Um, how do you go about preparing your guys, knowing that you're going to play a lot of guys and you're going to be splitting up some of those reps? You know, I think you go and practice what you try to do in the game and get, get guys reps and get guys, you know, whoever needs to work together, make sure they're working together. Um, getting reps together, seeing blitzes together, seeing whatever they need to see together, you know. Uh, and trying to execute, but uh, you know, I think in a in a first game, especially a first game when you have a rivalry game that's coming back for the first time in however long it's been over ten years, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of emotions, and I think that the key is going to be to not beat yourself in those situations, regardless of who you're playing, and and uh, don't let the emotions get the most of you. I think in any first game, a lot of times you try to do too much as a player, just because that's natural. You know, what I mean, you're excited to be out there, uh, you're doing, you know. <laughs> You, you want to make you want to make magic happen instead of just doing your job, you know. And I think that that's going to be important uh, in a game like this. Like I said, any first game that's important. I think that in a in a rivalry game, when that's your first game, you know, I think first games or rivalry games both are are, are games where guys kind of try to do too much. And when you put both of those in the same week, and it's a rivalry game that has been played in, in as long as it's been, so you assume emotions will be high. It's going to be very important to control those emotions, and, and like I said, just try to do your job the best you can. Because if you do that, you give her, you give us the best chance to win. You know, if there's some magic pill out there or some extra stuff that we need them to do, we'd coach them to do it. And so that's kind of going to be the message: is like, if you just do your job, that's enough, and that that's how that's how great things happen. And so I think that'll be very important to, um, like I said, not try to do too much, not get caught up in the emotions of it, but try to focus on doing our job regardless of who we have in the game. And if we do that, we'll give ourselves a chance. You want a fielder upstairs? Up top. What, just philosophy behind that. I know some coordinators like to be on the, uh, the field and see the eyes and feel the emotion. Other people like to be up top and see what's going on. What, what's your philosophy behind that? Um, be up top and see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I was on the field the first year at North Texas, and then uh, you can just see a lot more. You know, you'd go watch the tape on Sunday and be like, well, it had been helped to have seen that, you know. Right. Um, and so after year one at North Texas is when I went up. So first, you did it one year. Yeah. Didn't like it. I didn't hate it. It's just like I said, you, you go back on Sunday and like think, well, if I would have known that was going on, yeah, that would have helped, you know. And so I like being down there. I like being around the guys. I like being able to look in the quarterback's eyes and stuff like that. So there's definitely some advantages of being down on the field, being able to talk to him, you know, talk to the unit. Um, I like that side of things. Um, but I think it's easier – I think it's easier to get someone, you know, to have a guy that can communicate with the offense than it is to get a guy up top that can like, give you really clear information and, and tell you what you're trying to see, you know. And so that's that's why I went up. I think it's easier to get a guy to manage your, what you're doing downstairs than it is to manage what you're doing upstairs. The first time you and, you and Neil will be working together uh, in, a, in a game. Uh, does that take any adjustments or any getting used to? Or We'll find out Thursday. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never been in a game with him, so I don't really know. But uh, I think all head coaches are different. You know, obviously Coach Trail was different than Coach uh, Helton. Um, but, you know, when you start trying to call a game, you're just trying to call a game and go there and execute your, execute what you want to do. And so, um, like I said, I might have a better answer for you next week. But Neil said you did practice that. You have practiced that to kind of get that feel for how you're going to. Yeah, we've practiced going up quite a bit and being on headsets and stuff like that. Um, so, so yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work on like what the sideline's going to feel like, who's going to be up, who's going to be down. And, and, uh, like I said, kind of the, kind of the mechanics behind it all. Okay. Anything else for coach? Yeah, Graham, um, as a quarterback and as a coach, you may have different opinions of this too, but wings for a quarterback, how, how heavy of a stat is that? How much of that is attached to the one player? And then for JT's track record of winning. I think the intelligence you talked about is probably where you're going to go, but is there something about him that has kind of yielded to so many wins? Wins? Um, yeah. I think that wins is how all quarterbacks should be judged. You know, I think that, 
you know, when people talk about, oh, this guy or that guy or who's, you know, uh, who's the best quarterback or whatever, like I think it'd be hard to argue against Tom Brady, you know why? Because he's won, you know what I mean? And, and like to me, at the end of the day, that's the quarterback's job is to win games. And uh, and I have a one of my favorite sayings is winners win because that's what winners do. And uh, like and, and at first it's just kind of a silly saying, but if you think about it, like guys that win usually win in football. And then if you go play basketball, they win in basketball. And if you go play like chess, they win in chess or like some people just win. And I think that for quarterbacks, that's really, really important. And uh, yeah, I think that when you're evaluating quarterbacks, that's something you have to look at too. And, and obviously some quarterbacks are going to come from high school programs that aren't great. Um, and so like maybe they didn't want to say championship, but uh, even like Slovis, for instance, his high school was really, really bad before he got there. And they were just average when he was there, but it was a huge improvement from, from right before he got there. You know, there's a kid, my quarterback at North Texas, Mason Fine, was in a bad program and then when he was there they won like 10 11 and 12 games his last three years you know and so um i think there's something to that and i think that that's the quarterback's main job and i think that uh, that's how all quarterbacks are judged you know there's lots of guys that can put up great numbers and, and not win football games and at the end of the day your job as a quarterback is to win games not put up stats and so um doing whatever it takes to win is is important like i said i think that ultimately that's what what quarterbacks should be judged by um, good quarterbacks win and, and, and bad ones don't, you know. And so uh, I do think that's important. I think that that's – I think a quarterback plays a large part in that. Um, and, and, and JT, you know, if you look at his track record, I think that uh, when you do win, that just kind of becomes the expectation. And so when games get tight or whatever, I think that uh, you find a way to do it. And so I think coming from modern day, coming from a program that expe- uh, winning's the expectation, obviously probably helped at a young age. I think he played in a – from what I understand, that was before I was out there, but in a good youth league out there where they won, they didn't go to modern day and they win. Uh, went to a winning program in SC, and, but didn't play there long, and then went to Georgia and, and has been around a lot, winning a lot. And so um, when, when that's the case, I think it helps. When uh, I think everyone matters, but quarterback in particular, that's a big deal. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir.